what was it like when you were a little boy? Was it the same kind of... I know a lot of this coincides with just the rise of crack and heroin. It, heroin has been around a long, long time, but yeah, the rise of crack wasn't until the 70s and 80s. But So you grew up in the 60s, um, maybe even 50s, 60s? I was born in 1955. Okay. Um, what well, you said earlier about uh, the fatherless uh, households now they're doing the best they can because they didn't have a dad, you know, and it goes back generations. But has that always been the case or when did that start? When did the fatherlessness start? When did the dysfunction, the, 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 the gangs and things like that? Start? I think the fatherhood, the levels that it is now has started around the crack cocaine era. Um, you know, because before, you know, a, a daddy would snort a line of crack cocaine and still go back, take care of his family, do everything he had to do because you just take a little line. <laughs> That's all you did. Took a little line, yeah, you party down and you go home, take care of your family. It was when you started to smoke crack cocaine that you didn't give a damn and that that you began to even put your daughter up for sale or your son up for sale. I mean, you would put your children up in the line of fire for a hit. Somebody could say, man, your daughter look good. She's 16, she's getting big, ain't she? Yeah, man, go on, take her up in there, give me a rock. That has happened to millions of addicted families where their kids got abused on the backs of drug addiction, which created and broke up the family. I can tell you millions of people right now could tell you a story about how somebody was getting higher and then they, they all of a sudden got looted into a situation and a family member allowed it to happen. So that era, the crack cocaine era, uh, matter of fact, it, it's been said that crack cocaine was the only drug that made mothers give up their children because a mother has always been the protector. But so many mothers mm -hmm. gave up their children for a hit of crack cocaine or gave up their families. So just, just, just the potency and the strength of that particular drug the addiction. was a huge factor in this and that if that wouldn't have come around, things wouldn't have been as bad. I, I don't know, you know, because poverty has always been designed to be that way. And, uh, you know, you think about guns and crack and heroin mm -hmm. and the epidemic of those things mm -hmm. and how they happen in our community. A lot of that was designed to happen. You know, when you think about the, uh, the different reasons why we're set up the way we're set up, it was, it was a lot of Semitic things were happening. The mm -hmm. system did mm -hmm. a lot of these things because people keep saying we don't have no planes to fly to cocaine. And how does it get in? We don't. Ha we don't have a yeah. gun shop. Yeah. Where are the guns coming from? Why are gang members? Why, do they, why don't they fight like they used to? Well, who gave them these guns? You hear all these stories about guns being just dumped mm -hmm. in a community. This stuff is real. It's not just spaceships. It's, it's your belief that this stuff was uh, orchestrated. Yeah, there's, there's a systematic issue yeah. to this, and there's a reason why many cities where th there were poverty-ridden areas mm -hmm. now are now blooming to be um, folk where folks are moving back into, yeah. they're being rehabbed, yeah. and folks are living, when you look at Washington Avenue in uh -huh. Minneapolis, wow, that used to be kind of just an empty land, look at it now. Mm -hmm. You go down Washington Avenue, there's so many white folks, you wonder like, what the heck happened, right? And, and so, there's areas where poverty was there, but now there's prosperity there. Yep. And so you have to think about what happened to us and where is, why aren't we excelling the way we yeah. should? The system has not allowed us to do that. And there's been years of that. And people talk about reparations and all that, but that's going to be great. But what we really need to do is continue to build the families. Uh -huh because we need to continue to build the families and make make housing affordable to them make education affordable to them and also give them the trauma therapy that we need that we've been traumatized for hundreds yeah. and hundreds of years and when somebody says to me man why don't you guys get over that slavery stuff it's hard to get over something that you have to deal with every day every day as an african-american has went through all the stuff that i've been through to become a a entrepreneur to become a nonprofit leader, I still don't get the resources that my white counterparts get. I'm still, I started my organization in 98 mm -hmm. and every white counterpart 
that started their organization in 98 is doing 10 times better than I'm doing in a lot of ways. And it's the system is set up like that. And unfortunately, I work twice as hard because I have to, because I still want to stay on top of my game. I'll be 65 next year. I don't have what I need as mm-hmm. a person that should be prepared to retire. And I'm not complaining. What I'm saying that across the board, that's the way it is. We still, that's why Minnesota is one of those states that's in the top five in terms of racial disparities. Mm-hmm. It's real. Mm-hmm. And people keep saying, get over it. How do we get over something that's real? Mm. That's why I'm a huge fan of your work because, you know, it's, it's 2020 and uh, things are so polarized in the country right now, not just with like who you're going to vote for, but also like where you stand on issues like immigration or gun control. It's like, uh, you know, people are radical one way or the other. And, and when it comes down to this issue, you're like, yeah, there's systemic problems, but we also need to work hard because I think sometimes people say it's systemic. So what's the point? That's right. And they give up, but you're not like that. You say, no, no, no. You know, it's systemic. There's those problems overall with, you know, the government and police and, you know, systemic things. But then, but we still got to work. You know, we still got to pick ourselves up. We got to do what we can do. And I, and I just love watching you work with those juveniles. And four years ago, oh, man. when I came to your, came to your uh, headquarters and those guys were all like, you know, these were guys who I, I would imagine would have a tough time being humble and listen. Mm-hmm. But around you and your 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 mad dads you know you, you guys have been there yep. right you've walked the walk Absolutely. um you're older and they listen to you and 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 they, they they're humble and and they, they admitted things they didn't want to admit right i and mean they were them. vulnerable yeah and you show them love and they're probably not used to that and it's just like yeah. i'm watching healing happen right before my eyes and yeah. i also thought when i watched those classes across the street in urban ventures from your nonprofit, yeah I saw these parenting classes. I saw these relationship classes. I saw these job classes. I thought, I thought, why aren't there, why aren't there ten, why aren't there ten um, tables like the one VJ had with those six guys around? Why aren't there ten of these classrooms going on to help these families? Around the same time, I started doing some sub, substitute teaching in Minneapolis, and I go to these classes, and you see just all the, I mean, one, they're going to be wild for you because you're a substitute anyway. Right. But then you see like the stuff the kids write about. And you see just the way they are depressed and crying mm-hmm. or their, yeah. their, their, their tempers are incredible. Yeah. One of my worst days was with, was with fourth graders. And I saw like four or five deaths tipped over by the end of the day. It, wow. And they were so young to have so many emotional problems. And I thought, man. And then I found you and I thought, well, we need more of him. We need more of what he's doing. And so, I mean, I guess I'm just. And, and, and you know, we, that could happen. Like right now, we have a surplus in the state of Minnesota. Yeah. But none of that surplus, they're thinking about giving the money back to the people, Yeah, but not giving any money where we needed it. And just this last session, there was very little money given to intervention and prevention in mm-hmm. the community. Mm-hmm. And our, our black legislators and officials said, yeah, we, we couldn't get a W because everybody was so divided, Republicans, Democratic. We couldn't get any money for crime prevention and intervention. Yeah. And so what do you expect you know yeah, and I, then you wonder why is the crime going up in st paul why is crime going up here because you're not investing in it we know what to do but you're not even calling us to yeah. the table to say what you're doing can we do 10 of those you can you can do 10 of those let's invest in 10 of those and so it's important to understand that the powers that be do you want you want to give the money back to the people and not solve some of the problems? Then when you know there's a problem and you're not investing in it, yeah. why would you do that? Is that because those leaders are people of color and you don't want to listen to them? We have the answers. Mm-hmm. And when we go in these rooms in the Capitol, we, it don't look like us. Yeah. So then those are the people that we keep voting in that don't take a look at our solutions, but we keep voting them in and they're not bringing us to the table. You can't, you can't, if you're not at the table, you can't help make a decision. I think it's what's politically trendy. Like right now, I know with uh, the particular governor and, 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 and you know, uh, politicians that we have in office, like early childhood education is a big thing. Like they tend to favor certain things like that rather than the, the, the kinds of things that you guys do. Um, I don't know. I mean, you, you must have seen this over the years where sometimes you're more champion than other years, depending on maybe the... The sway. Of, hey, I would almost think VJ that if um, that, that, that the more conservatives would back the kind of work you, that you, you do because it's more in your face. It's a little bit more 
tough love you know what i mean yeah. but i don't know if that's, that if that has a, a, a that's a good point and that's where i need to spend more time at the capitol i need to build relationships i went down there i had a bill that i was trying to get passed i got it it went through but it never got a hearing so i'm going back to see if i can get a bill to get something to happen so i'll keep fighting i keep fighting i keep fighting and it's interesting how um in the world of politics, people backdoor deals are made, mm -hmm. and I got to get closer to the back door to get a deal made. Or how about we walk through the front door and we just, you know, ask the people at home watching this donate to Mad Dads. Go to Mad. Is, it, is it Minneapolis Mad Dads or Mad Dads Minneapolis? It's Minneapolis Mad Dads. Dads. Minneapolis Mad yep. Dads dot org. And I'm a big. I mean, I just I love how the the individual is empowered today from from the internet and technology. Yes, and the internet absolutely. has done a lot. I think to kind of unravel the country, but it also provides us a way to do our own show, to have people just donate directly to you. You don't need a bill in the house, although that would be nice. You don't need yeah. that if people at home just, just chip in a little bit to the work that you guys do. So that's right. check out MinneapolisMadDads.org and donate to help VJ and his work out.